Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video and today we have our unboxing and first look review at the Dell XPS 13 Plus refreshed here for 2023. Now, as far as the physical attributes, they are going to be exactly the same as last year, where you're going to see the changes are going to be under the hood. It's now outfitted with a 13th gen P-series processor, the Core i7-1360P. We also have the OLED display here. We also have this gorgeous design that we really love that we saw last year, and we're seeing it obviously again this year. But the question remains, is it worth upgrading here this year with the 13th gen processor, or are you better off getting last year's model with the 12th gen and saving a few bucks. We're gonna find out in this unboxing and first look review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is the Dell XPS 13 Plus, all new for 2023, coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I just wanna let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell, I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was actually purchased with my own money, but I do anticipate getting a review unit from Dell with slightly different specs. Stay tuned, that will be coming very soon. Now, pricing for this refresh model here for 2023 with the 13th Gen i7 processor comes in at $1,399.00. Price as tested here today with the OLED display, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. That one comes in at $1,849.50. Now, if you want to save some money on last year's model, get a Core i5 and you can get it with the touchscreen Full HD+. Plus. I did take a look at that last year as well. That one comes in at $899, not a bad deal, although that only has eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you go over to Best Buy, they have a really great sale going on on the XPS 13 last year's model with the Core i7 in graphite with the OLED display with 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. That one comes in at $1699. I'll leave a link for everything in the description below. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Okay, so pretty typical so far. We've seen this before. And again, they didn't even change the model number. It's still the 9320, but with a 13th gen processor. So here you can see 9320 here and you get some warranty information and so forth. So pretty standard stuff. Let's file that to the side. Now, again, like last year, you get a couple of extra accessories. You get the USB-A to USB Type-C adapter, which is always appreciated. Again, there's no USB-A port on this model. And then you get your headphone adapter to USB-C, 3.5 millimeter to USB Type-C. Okay. And then of course you get a very compact 60 watt power adapter. We saw that last year and we're seeing it again this year. Very, very compact. And then of course you get your USB type C cable. Okay. You can see here the power cord. So pretty standard stuff that we've seen before. So nothing too surprising. And again, we know what we're going to expect with this. We're just getting a refresh under the hood. This is that gorgeous platinum color. Of course, we've seen this before. You could see it here. This is absolutely gorgeous. I went with this last year as well. I love the way this looks. Now I do have the graphite model and that's right here. So for those of you you know can't decide between graphite and platinum, here are the two side by side. Again, physically are going to be the same. So but where you're going to see the difference, of course, you'll see less fingerprints on this one than you would on this one. All right, let's see if we can open this with one finger. We certainly can, and there she is. Absolutely gorgeous, once again. Goes far back as you see here. So you wanna take a look at this. There is that platinum model right here. And this has the OLED display as well. So very, very nice. 
So according to this, 2.13 pounds, and with the travel weight, 3.27 pounds, okay? So that's pretty light. And then, of course, we want to look at kilograms alone without the charging adapter, 1.277, all in, travel weight, 1.436 kilograms. And this is the keyboard. Let's give it a listen. Very nice. All right, let's check out the port selection. So we're gonna start off on the left side where you get your USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port. Full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. On the right side, guess what is a second USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port that is also full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Now, I do like the fact that they are separated. They're not on the same side of each other, so it gives you a little bit more options when plugging it in. You don't have to have the wires on the same side. That is a benefit. But of course, no USB-A, no HDMI, no headphone jack, right? So you have those adapters in the box. You don't get HDMI, but you do get a headphone adapter in the box and a USB-A to USB-C adapter. So not a great port selection, but then, you know, we, we've, got, we've had that situation before. Now, when it comes to the internals, exactly the same as last year's model with upgradable SSD, which of course has some excellent reads and writes, as you can see from these results, really good. And I like the fact that you can expand it out yourself. And these are really good PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage. Now, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. It's LP DDR5 RAM, and it is running pretty nicely, and it is running in dual channel mode. The Wi-Fi card, which is killer Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth are a combo card that is soldered into the motherboard not upgradable by the user now as far as the thermals are concerned i did run a few tests already in my initial look at this in my live unboxing for those that didn't see it i'll leave a link to the replay in the description below but i did notice the fan noise it does get about 48 49 decibels in the ultra performance mode wasn't too bad in the other modes and then of course it did get pretty warm as you can see from the exterior it did really heat up here getting about 55 or so degrees celsius so definitely something to keep your eye on of course i still need to do my full testing but again i'm not too surprised here in this ultra thin light chassis you're going to have some issues with heat but we'll see as the results will be in the full review but i am seeing some thermal throttling as it did not get a passing score on the time spy stress test so again some of the things we're going to keep our eye on for that upcoming full review now, as far as the battery, it's the same 55 watt hour battery, and I am seeing about an hour better battery life with the exact same model as last year, except I have the 13th gen processor as opposed to the 12th gen. And of course, this is the Core i7. This is the 1360p, and I'm seeing about an hour better battery life over that same model from last year on the same test. So it's seeing a little bit of an improvement when it comes to longevity. Now, of course, the OLED models don't do as well in terms of battery life than the IPS model. In fact, the Core i5 model with the Full HD Plus touch display that I have on hand from last year, that one did 10 hours and 36 minutes on the same PC Mark 10 modern office battery test. You're looking at about an hour and a half more than this year's model and about two and a half hours better than last year's model running that OLED display with the i7, of course. So again, you're going to do better in terms of battery life if you go with the IPS option. Now, of course, there is the UHD plus or 4K plus option. I don't have that on hand, so I really can't comment on terms of the battery life. My guess is obviously it won't do as well as the full HD plus, but it might do slightly better than the OLED model with its 3.5K maybe. I don't know. It might be a wash. Again, I don't have one on hand. Now, of course, the only refresh we're getting here is the processor. We now have a 13th gen Core i7, 1360p, a 28 watt CPU with 12 cores. That's eight efficient cores and four performance cores. And as you can see from the single core and multi-core results here from Geekbench 6, definitely is good performance here. Not a huge increase over last year, but definitely a slight increase, maybe 10% better CPU performance. Now, this is running the same Intel Iris Xe graphics. I'm not seeing a big difference year over 
every year. And again, as I mentioned many times in the past, the XE graphics are getting a bit long in the tooth in need of a refresh. Hopefully we'll see that next year. But again, nothing to blow you away in terms of the graphics performance. Now I did run the Cinebench R23. I didn't run the full sustained workload test. I ran a modified five minute test, but I'm seeing good single and multi-core results here. So definitely uh, something to look forward to in testing out. Again, not too bad in terms of this performance. It's definitely going to be good for everyday use doing Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. It all will work very, very good. Now, when it comes to the display, there are four options. And once again, I went with the 3.5K OLED option, 13.4 inches, 3456 by 2160. Now, I do like the OLED. It gives you the deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, the really high contrast. Everything just pops a little bit more with an OLED display. And that's once again why I chose that. And if you're a content creator, you're going to love this display because it has excellent coverage of the color gamut. It is extremely color accurate and it is just great for doing things such as color grading, Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, and the like. And it's a really great display to consume media. Watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube has been great. Now, one thing I will say is that this is limited, obviously, to 60 hertz, as we've had in the past. No option for a higher refresh rate or a dynamic refresh rate or something up to 120 hertz like we get with, say, Samsung or Asus and other brands that are offering those type of the displays here in 2023. And with that being said, I would be very, very surprised if we don't get a higher refresh rate option for 2024. Four. We'll see. But this is still an excellent display and it's a bright display. They claim 400 nits. I measured 391 nits, so it's going to be good for both indoor and outdoor use. Although, again, in direct sunlight, you may have some issues. But for the most part, glare and reflections have not been too much of an issue. Now, as far as the touch display, the touch layer is very responsive. Navigating through the OS with your finger, pinch to zoom, it all worked well. I love that responsiveness and that feature offered here on this OLED model. And of course, not everybody needs the OLED. And for those that want better battery life, there are the three other IPS options to go with, especially with the Full HD Plus resolution. Now, I still have the Full HD Plus from last year. That one is the Graphite model, and that is a touch display as well. And it's been great as far as consuming media. The responsiveness of the touch display has been great. And it is also pretty color accurate. And it is also good in terms of the coverage of the color gamut. So for those that want better longevity in terms of that battery, life take a look at that full hc plus model okay so we have the same 720p camera we've gotten the last few times a little disappointing obviously we're in 2023 we want to see at a minimum 1080p video here so we can do our zoom calls hybrid work work from home but having said that as a 720p it is certainly adequate it'll get the job done i guess what do you think about the video what do you think about the audio now once one thing i do know on this one is i noticed that there are the studio effects that you can do you have the auto framing that will always keep you in frame i noticed we have the eye contact and then we have the background effects like the background blur and stuff like that so uh pretty interesting nice to have that here on this xps 13 plus of course it is an ir camera you can log in with windows hello or you can use the fingerprint scanner as that power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner again i want to know what you think let me know in that comment section below and for those wondering yes you can open it up with one finger now, one of the biggest concerns I had last year with that major redesign with the XPS 13 Plus was the keyboard, and I wasn't sure how I was going to like it. But having used it for the past year, it has been one of the most pleasant surprises of this device. Comfortable typing for extended periods of time. It never felt really like your fingers were going to bottom out, and it was great for typing out long documents and emails. So that has been a really nice strong suit of this laptop. And the other radical redesign, of course, is going with that capacitive function row. Of course, I prefer physical keys over this, although it did work as advertised, but I still prefer actual physical keys like you get on the standard XPS 13 model. Now, there is a multi-stage backlight that I think you'll see a little bit better on the graphite model than you would on the platinum model. That is just the way it is. Obviously, the light on light colors will be hard to see the contrast, but on the graphite model, that is really not much of an issue.
And the other thing I was concerned about was the haptic touchpad. Now that glass layer, of course, has Gorilla Glass. It's very nice looking, no delineation as to where the touchpad begins and ends. But I can tell you, having used it for the past year, the responsiveness has been excellent. The tactility was good. The feedback is good. And it really was very responsive when it comes to scrolling and doing all the gestures worked as you'd expect. Now, when it comes to the audio, the XPS 13 Plus sports quad speakers, we heard them last year. They were actually pretty good, good volume, good mids, decent bass. For an ultra portable laptop, that is a Windows laptop, I should say, really good sound coming out of it. Although, when you compare it to the MacBook Pro 14 that I have here, I have the M1 Pro, the speakers on that are superior in my opinion. They just have a little bit more character, a little bit more oomph to it. So let's give them a listen side by side and let's see which one you think is better in terms of the audio. I think it's the MacBook Pro, although for a Windows laptop, the XPS 13 Plus actually sounds pretty good. Let's give them a listen. Okay, people, let's bring it all home. The XPS 13 Plus here for 2023 is more of an iterative update than a major redesign. That was what we got last year. Didn't expect it this year, but we do get the 13th gen Intel processor, the Core i7-1360P as reviewed here. And that, of course, showing about a 10% or so increase in CPU performance. And of course, this also retains the Iris XE graphics, which is not gonna blow you away in terms of performance. And we're seeing about an hour more in terms of battery life over last year's model, but unfortunately we're not seeing a major improvement when it comes to the thermals. Under the ultra performance mode, it will run pretty hot and it will get pretty loud in terms of the fan noise. But running it in the optimized mode or balanced mode, you will be fine. And I'll have more to say on this in the upcoming full review. But that being said, this is more an iterative update than a revolutionary update. So that's what you can expect with the XPS 13 Plus here for 2023. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.